this is something you're interested in learning or knowing how to make you want to keep on watching up to the end of the video and i will take you guys along with me to the market and showing you some of the items i purchased so let's get right into the video So these are the items I purchased at the market. I got about three zippers, um, wadding to pad the outfit I'll be making, black lining, and this is the fabric that my client gave to me. And I also got this white polo jersey kind of fabric which I'll be using to make the color. And I got some champagne gold satin over there. To begin, I folded my fabric into two right sides facing and I drew a borderline like I always do from where all my body points or body measurements will be taken. Then at this point, I have my chest, like my bust, my under bust and the length as well. Next, I'll be taking half my bust pan which is 4 inches and that is what I have there. And from that 4 inch point, I marked 1.5 inches towards the side front to create the dart for the bottom piece next i'll be taking the dart along the armhole because this is going to be a princess dart if you do not know how to draft a princess dart i have a detailed video on the channel do check it out okay now for the neckline i'll be using a neckline that is two inches wide and 2.5 inches deep so i'll be cutting two inches wide and 2.5 inches deep for the neckline so this is my front neckline it is two inches wide and 2.5 inches deep and this is my front pattern and you can see on the shoulder there i slanted the shoulder by half an inch then i took uh, a quarter of my body measurements on the side ensuring to replace all the dots like i i would always do and i went ahead to cut it out and this is what the front plan looks like like i said I have a detailed video on how to do a princess dart on the channel so do check it out. Then for the back I basically draw the dart lines like I did in my princess dart tutorial. That's my um, boss, the under boss, the length. Then for the back I added one inch to the length as opposed to the front so the back is one inch longer at this point and the reason it's longer is because I'll be attaching a collar to this piece. So what what happened is this one inch would be sewn to the front shoulder and bent over like this so it would help the collar relax a lot nicer on my client as opposed to when I cut the front and the back the same length so this would ensure that it doesn't choke the, my client the outfit is not dragging up or choking my client or anything like that so this would be uh, used to make the collar relax a lot nicer okay then for mm. the skirt piece I basically folded my fabric into two and I, from that border line that I have at the top I subtracted the length of the top piece that we just cut so the top piece length is 16.5 so I subtracted 16.5 then from that border line I took my hip line as well as the length of the skirt and that is what I have marked out here so I'm just going to cut this out and that is the front piece and to cut the back piece of the skirt I basically placed it on the same fabric folded and just kind of extended it a little bit towards the side just so I have a zip allowance towards the bottom or here for the bottom part of this piece so i'll be attaching ruffles at the bottom so that's why it looks a little bit short ruffles would be added to the bottom to add to the length of the garment so this is what we are having at this point i went ahead to cut out my lining pieces as well for my front as well as my back as well as the skirt piece and every other piece that is here i cut a lining to suit each piece okay so what I'll be doing is to join the darts. I'll be joining the darts of the main fabric on the back separately and the main fabric on the front separately. 
before I go ahead to join the lining pieces for the front and the back separately so what I did for this front piece I just ironed some feasible wording uh basically from the under boss to the end of the dart and this would give the bust area a lot more structure and firmness yes so that is what i have there so what i'll be doing now is to join the darts on the main fabric separately and on the lining fabric separately you should see my bustier tutorial you would understand how to do this a lot better okay so this is the main fabric after it has been sewn on the dart sides so what i'll be doing next i basically repeated the same thing for the lining so what i'll be doing next is to place the lining right sides facing onto the main piece of my front and just stitch the sides just stitch the sides of the lining to the sides of the main fabric i did the same thing for the back piece as you can see the sides are sewn in and yeah i'm just gonna go do that for my front piece as well after sewing in this is what it looks like and see the edges are inside on the sides then every other part is pretty raw or every other edge is exposed except that on the sides moving over to the skirt i went ahead to do the same thing on the skirt pieces as you can see i used the line to turn the sides then i took my darts on the back and on the front as well so you can see the zipper allowance and the side seams or the side area is pretty turned just the bottom and the top edge that are exposed and that is because i'll be attaching ruffles to the bottom and attaching this lower part of the skirt to the upper part of the garment that we just created or we just stitched all together okay so i went ahead to sew the bottom part of the skirt to the upper part of the garment so we have like our piece coming together i stitched the, along the waist area like you can see then um this is the poly fabric that i'll be using for the collar you can see it has like a two-way stretch so i'll be cutting along the grain lines that do not stretch just to hold my collar a lot firm and after joining your collar together i re recommend you measure along the collar from end to end and also take your client's neck measurement so my client's neck measurement was about is 15 inches actually so i have one inch for zipper on either side so i'll be adding that to the 15 so that will be 17 inches then one extra inch for ease so it doesn't choke my client so 18 inches so i measured around my neckline from end to end and it's 18 inches so just in case your neckline is not up to what you have for your client or for the ease or zipper allowance you might want to trim just a little teeny bit to meet up that measurement so you don't want to over trim so it doesn't come too deep or too you know open so when that is done i'm just going to fold my fabric into two along the side that doesn't stretch depending on the kind of fabric you're using like i said then i'm going to mark nine inches on folds because that's going to be half of my 18 inches for the neck i'm going to mark half inch on fold then when that is done i'll be creating the base and raising that base by 1.5 inch upwards you can do anything from 1.5 to one inch so that is the base that i have at the bottom it is 1.5 inches wide and nine inches long then from the top of the base i went up by 2.5 inches to create the lapel so that is what i have at the top there it is 2.5 inches towards the top and it is one inch shorter than the base so the lapel is eight inches long and 2.5 inches wide then from one end towards the end of the lapel i extended it by half an inch and connected it back into the base just to create that slant that i have at the front there so my base is nine inches long and 1.5 inches wide and my lapel is 2.5 inches wide and 8 inches long at the bottom and 8.5 inches long at the top because of the slant then i cut out all the pieces i have two pieces for my base and i have four pieces for my lapel so this is my base piece and there are two my lapel pieces are two 
are four my lapel pieces are four two pairs so i'll be pairing them in twos i'll be making two pairs of each and i'll be pairing them together like so so once i pair uh make a pair of each lapel i'll be stitching stitching it down from this point here all the way to the top of the slant and all the way to the top of the collar and down the side as well so i'm just going to sew from here to there all the way across the top and down the sides i'm not going to be joining or stitching the bottom part so i'm just going to go do that and show you guys what it looks like So this is what it looks like after I just stitch. This is my lapel or this is just a piece of the lapel and when I turn right sides out it should look something like this. Then I went ahead to stop stitch the bottom after you know turning it right sides out and I made a notch at the center of my collar base just so I have a guide as to where to place my collar. So I'm just going to paste one piece of the lapel onto the notch and place the other piece as close as possible to where I placed the first one but you do not want them to overlap or touch each other sorry you do not want them to overlap or touch each other just they should just be close to him push I don't let them touch they should not touch each other so what I'll be doing next is to place the other piece of my collar base right onto that. So what this does, it kind of puts the lapel in between the collar base and just so when I sew all the seams are hidden and you know not vis visible. So I'll be sewing from that side all the way to the top and down the other side as well so i'll be sewing from end to top to end again and when i turn right sides out it should look something like this i went ahead to give it a good press just to lay all the seams down and this is what i have it looking like at this point next up i went ahead to pin a piece of my collar base to the wrong side of the neckline so I have it pinned from end to end and I'm pinning on the wrong side first so I'll go ahead and stitch that down after stitching this is what it looks like you can see the color is already coming to life then I'll be folding in this front part of the color base inwards and just top stitch along the entire neckline so i have the down pin so you might want to do this just so it holds everything in place and i'll be ensuring that all the previous stitches are hidden using this um white base here so this is my sleeve and i cut out this band that is three inches wide and it basically goes across the length of or the width of my sleeve then i pinned the bottom together and i'm just going to sew along that pinned area at the bottom having sewn it i turned it right sides out so it was sewn on the wrong side so now i'm turning it right sides out and this is what it looks like and you can see that those seams or that seam is inside is locked in so for the top edge i'm just going to fold it in like you can see that i've already started doing that i'm just going to fold the top edge in and top stitch and it should come out looking like this so this is what we have for the sleeve of this garment then i went ahead to attach the ruffles at the bottom and that is basically it you guys it's super easy super simple go give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already to join the family and share this video as much as you want so see you guys in my next video bye